Hi guys, before beginning the class, I want to give you two recommendations. The first one is that I want you to wash your hands regularly to keep them clean. And the other one is to wear a face mask to be safe all the time. If it's needed to go out in order to cover your face, mouth and eyes. Guys, have you ever heard about modal verbs? I bet you have. Now, I have a picture of some modal verbs used in English language. Can you pronounce them? May, should, might, must, will, and shall. I'm going to repeat them and I want you to repeat them after me. May. Say it. Should. Say it. Might. Say it. Must. Say it. Will. Say it. Shall. Say it. Well done. Continuing with the class, I'll tell you something related to modal verbs. Do you know what modal verbs are used for? No? Okay, let me tell you something. What modal verbs are used for? Modal verbs are used for showing if something is certain, possible, or impossible, right? Modal verbs are used for talking about abilities, ask for permissions, and make requests and offers. Definition of modal verbs. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what modal verbs are used for and how can we use them in real situations. For example, I'm going to tell you what must is good for. Must express personal obligation. Example, you must brush your teeth before going to bed. What it means, that it is an obligation for you to brush your teeth before going to sleep. Okay? Now, I have should. Should express advice or suggestion. Example, David should get up early for going to the school. What it means, that David is still sleeping and he has to go to, to the school. And I am giving him a piece of advice for him to get up in order to get early to the school. So, I have two of them here, must and should. Must is an obligation, but should is an advice or suggestion, right? Continuing with the definition of modal verbs, I have may. May is used to talk about possible events, but in real situations. I have an example here. I may go shopping tomorrow. I may go shopping tomorrow, right? Which means that it's going to be real for tomorrow. But on the other hand, I have might. Might refers to events that are hypothetical or possible, but very unlikely. Example, Helen might write a letter. Might means that it is not true for sure. Now, I have two of them, may and might. Might is for a hypothetical event, but may is for a real situation or real event. And finally, I have the definition of will and shall. Will is used to form the future tense, added before the main verb. I have an example here. I will travel to Roatan. What it means, that the trouble will be in the future. That's why I wrote will. And I have shall. Shall is used with the base form for future time references. Example, Mary shall visit Paris. Shall is more formal than will. 
and it is not used any longer. Now I'm going to give you some examples of sentences using modal verbs. Sentences using modal verbs. Now I'm going to read the sentences using the modal verbs must, should, and will. Sentence number one. She must take the children with her. She must take the children with her. Ella debe llevar los niños con ella. Number two. He must lend us the money which we need. He must lend us the money which we need. Él debe prestarnos el dinero que necesitamos. Number three. She must be back by noon. She must be back by noon. Ella debe regresar en la mediodía. Number four. She must return later. She must return later. Ella debe regresar después. Number five. You must learn at least five new words every day. You must learn at least five new words every day. Tú debes aprender al menos cinco nuevas palabras todos los días. Should. Number one. He should stop studying this month. He should stop studying this month. Él debería dejar de estudiar este mes. Number two. He should be sleeping at this time. He should be sleeping at this time. Él debería estar durmiendo en este momento. Number three. He should respect his mother. He should respect his mother. Él debería respetar a su madre. Number four. She should be in better health. She should be in better health. Ella debería estar en mejor salud. Number five. She should be at home. She should be at home. Ella debería estar en la casa. Well. Number one. She will read the newspaper tomorrow. She will read the newspaper tomorrow. Ella leerá el periódico mañana. Number two. We will come to school by bus. We will come to school by bus. Nosotros vendremos a la escuela en bus. Number three. You will work very hard. You will work very hard. Tú trabajarás muy duro. Number four. She will like to sit at the beach. She will like to sit at the beach. A ella le gustará sentarse en la playa. And then, and then number five. We will play in the park next week. We will play in the park next week. Jugaremos en el parque la próxima semana. As you can see, must is for something that is mandatory. Should is for something advising. And will is for something that will happen in the future. Sentences using the modal verbs shall, may, and might. Shall. You shall not pass without permission. You shall not pass without permission. No pasarás sin permiso. Number two. He shall be rewarded. He shall be rewarded. Él será recompensado. Number three. I shall go when I please. I shall go when I please. Yo me iré cuando me dé la gana. Number four. I shall write to her in short time. I shall write to her in a short time. Yo le escribiré a ella en un corto tiempo. Number five. I shall be there by 10 o'clock. I shall be there by 10 o'clock. Yo estaré ahí a las 10 de la mañana en punto. May. Number one. They may not accept the offer. They may not accept the offer. Ellos no pueden aceptar la oferta. Number two. You may feel better after taking the medicine. You may feel better after taking the medicine. Tú puedes sentirte mejor después de tomar las medicinas. Number three. 
They may lose everything gambling. They may lose everything gambling. Ellos pueden perderlo todo en los juegos de azar. Number four. She may see things differently now. She may see things differently now. Ella puede ver las cosas de una manera diferente hoy. Number five. You may like it if you try it. You may like it if you try it. Te puede gustar si lo intentas. Sentences with might. Number one. I might play with your team. I might play with your team. Yo podría jugar con tu equipo. Number two. She might play video games later. She might play video games later. Ella podría jugar videojuegos después. Number three. We might go to church on Sunday. We might go to church on Sunday. Nosotros podríamos ir a la iglesia el domingo. Number four. She might be back later. She might be back later. Ella podría estar de vuelta más tarde. Number five. They might help me with English. They might help me with English. Ellos podrían ayudarme con inglés. Now, it's the practice time. So, get ready. Now I have a conversation for you. The conversation is called, He Must Be Really Busy. And it is between Ryan and Katie. And it goes this way. Ryan, my friend Evan never seems to have time for me these days. I just can't count on him anymore. Katie, well, he's starting a new job, right? He must be really busy. Ryan, yeah, I'm sure he is, but he used to drop by or call me all the time. Katie, he might be feeling stressed out from the job, or he could be upset with you about something. Ryan, no, that can't be the problem. I haven't done anything wrong. I think I better call him. Katie, yeah, I think you should. Ryan, okay. Well, there's no answer. Katie, he must still be sleeping. It's only 6 and 30. I'm going to read it again for you. It says, Ryan, my friend Evan never seems to have time for me these days. I just can't count on him anymore. Katie, well, he's starting a new job, right? He must be really busy. Ryan, yeah, I'm sure he is, but he used to drop by or call me all the time. Katie, he might be feeling stressed out from the job, or he could be upset with you about something. Ryan, no, that can't be the problem. I haven't done anything wrong. I think I'd better call him. Katie, yeah, I think you should. Ryan, okay. Well, there's no answer. Katie, he must still be sleeping. It's only 6 and 30. Now, guys, I have a reading for you. The reading says, How to be healthy. Good health is a wonderful thing, but you can take it for granted. For good health, you should eat nutritious food, and you should be physically active each day. You have to be aware of the things that you choose to eat, and you have to make time in your daily schedule for physical activity. It's important to choose a variety of fruits and vegetables. You must also eat a variety of grains daily, especially whole grains like whole wheat bread and brown rice. You should include fat-free or low-fat milk and dairy products. For protein, you should eat lean meats, poultry, fish, beans, eggs, and nuts. You shouldn't have foods with a lot of cholesterol, salt, or added sugar. You shouldn't eat junk food like cheeseburgers, french fried potatoes, candy, and soft drinks, even though they may taste very good. 
In addition to proper nutrition, you must be physically active. You might try to get at least 30 minutes of exercise most days of the week. If you are overweight, you must increase the amount of time that you spend in physical activity. You will see how exercise helps a lot in your life. You may participate in a team sport or do individual activities you enjoy doing like swimming, tennis, or hiking. Now, let's answer some questions about the reading that we just read. The first question says, what should we do to have a good health? What do you think we should do? Yeah, that's right. Eat nutritious food and be physically active each day. The question number two says, what kind of grains should we eat? What do you think? Yeah, that's right. Whole grains like whole wheat bread and brown rice. And the question number three says, what kind of proteins should we eat daily? What do you think? Oh yeah, that's right. Lean meats, poultry, fish, beans, eggs and nuts. Well done guys, good work. And finally, guys, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you for your attention and your participation. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.